they should get her on time then, right? You hear me all good? Yes. It's a little bit strange to have this in your, in your head, <laughs> especially when I'm only talking to 50, yeah, 10 people. <laughs> but let's just start. Uh, my name is Patti, I come from Iceland, uh, I live here in Frankfurt, and I have a Drupal agency here in Frankfurt, and it's called Animal Internet, or One Time Internet. Um, like my status, I'm looking forward to the session. Uh, what is my version? I'm 34. Uh, I'm also 8 because I'm born on leap year. Uh, so you can do it, yeah, you have already done the calculation. And I have been working in Drupal since version 5. And I think I started probably in the year 2006, 2007, when we started to do our first uh, websites with Drupal. Uh, that was not really pretty, and it's getting better every day, and that's why I'm here. I'm gonna tell you today about rules. Uh, it's gonna be a beginner lesson, in the sense of that I'm just gonna go through what is rules, and how can you use it to make your websites or what you're doing with Drupal better and easier. So I studied computer science in Reykjavik. Then I went to Vienna, and I studied there uh, engineering management. Like, like an MBA for technical people. Uh, there I, I did uh, robotic uh, soccer, so I'm actually a European champion in that. I was the only woman uh, participating in this event. And I'm married and I have two little children. So my Twitter account, Patti Sonia, also I'm on internet. Um, yeah. So back to the why I'm here, I'm going to tell you about rules. So rules is a very big module that is being used uh, by at least, or installed, at least uh, that, is being, that is using it now 209,000 times. So it's one of the top modules in Drupal. And uh, the version now is 7x2.6. It's actively maintained by guys in Vienna that actually started with me in TU Vienna. I was not studying with them, but we were there at the same time. And the lead maintainer is called Wolfgang Siegler, and he's known by the name Fago. Uh, they are actively now working on developing this module, making it better. They are even uh, looking for funding to, uh, to develop it now for Drupal 8, even more. Uh, so just you can look at the all up with the websites on Drupal.org project rules. So this is a module that is being maintained and it's definitely worth it to look at. So let's go through it. What is it? Rules. There are three modules that you get when you take and install the project. That's the rules module. That, doesn't, that does it all, but as a site builder, if you're not going to program, you can't do much. So you uh, you can then only what you have to do you have to install the or you have to enable the rules UI to be able to make all your rules. So this is the two modules that you need, and it's also required that you have the entity API to be able to to install it. Uh, rules schedule you also get with it. Uh, I'm going to tell you in the end about what that does, uh, but let's not think about it now. What is rules? So rules is a module that allows site builders to make like little programs, micro programs, to do something on certain events. So I'm gonna go through these three things here. It is like it reacts on an event, on something, like something happened, then it does something. Then it evaluates the conditions. Is it me that supposed to do something? So you can say like, who, who is supposed to do something if this event happens, and then what should I then do? So this is like the, the three main things of the rules, this events, conditions, and actions. Does anybody in here use rules? Yeah? So rules is of course uh, mostly used in the complex websites. So when you're building a normal website, you don't need rules because if it is only a presentation of, a, let's say, a dentist, you most likely don't need this module. 
But if you're going to do something, like you have users, you have some events where you, for example, want to send out an email to everybody, this is a very good module to do it. So let's go through the events. Uh, what, is, what is an event? Event is, for example, if you're building a website and you have your editors doing something, you can, there are all kinds of events. For example, somebody was saving a new post or blog or some kind of a note. Somebody put something new in. Then you can react on it. You can do something then. Or somebody was updating something. Or just basically user was logging in. Um, a new user was going to the system, uh, logging in, uh, creating an account. Or a new comment, and this is just endless. So you have all these events that are already built in that you can react on, okay? Please ask questions if you have any. Uh, then you check the conditions. So for example, you can have a condition, uh, you have a user role, the user role is for example a group of people attending the Drupal camp, and you want to, on the event, when somebody comments, you want to then check, is this person part of the role Drupal camp. If yes, then I'm gonna do an action. So this is how it works. If for example, is this content, is somebody publishing something on the front page? If yes, then I'm gonna do something. If no, I'm gonna ignore it. Uh, data comparison, that's very helpful if you're doing a complicated workflow systems. For example, you can check. Um, did the status of something change? So I'm gonna show you an example later. For example, you have something that is active, you have status. And then somebody changes this to be inactive, and because it changed, you can react on it. You can say, oh, did it change? If yes, then I do something. And what can you do? You can execute all these actions that are already there. So this makes the site builders, they can suddenly become programmers. They don't have to go in the code and do complicated code. They can a little bit click together their little mini programs. For example, you can show a message on the site. I'm going to show you an example later that shows when a user logs in, I want to say, hi, welcome, and personalize it. Welcome, Martin. You last time logged in on this day. And there are a lot of stuff that you see today on websites like Facebook. There are all these personalized stuff going on, you know, hello, something, when you've been told to do something. This you can do a lot with with rules. You can publish or unpublish content. For example, if you have a date, um, you want to say that this should only be published within this time. You can, with Chrome actions or something, check and then unpublish. You can send out an email, and this is probably what people start, when they start using rules, they start with this one. Because I want to send out an email. Maybe to everybody who's registered in a Drupal camp. Or I want to send out an individual email. I want to say, hi, you, you know, welcome, and, and make it personalized based on what he has been doing in the system. I can also change data. I can create new entities. I've been doing that a lot in, in a complex system that we've been building, where we then, on certain events, we then build new entities with rules. So you can also, of course, program it all, but it's not very, we, we in our company, what we try to do, we try to use as much with rules that we can, and if the performance is not done, you know, if, if, if the performance is also okay, because uh, it's then easier when you have many customers, and you have, let's say, 10 developers, and one of the customer calls, then if everything is done the same way, you don't have to go and look into the code, and maybe somebody was sloppy, the other person was good. And here you just have it all the same, you have standards. Uh, you can add a user role to somebody. For example, I created an account, and I want that the person immediately goes into some special user group, or, or, or a role, gets a special role. And this could be helpful if he, for example, says, I'm a woman, then okay, I'm not gonna put her in the Drupal camp woman group, or, or role, and show her something else. Just an example. Uh, page redirect, you can also do all the redirections there. So it's pretty powerful. I hope you like have got it now. So I can show you a couple of examples. 
Uh, you can then do all of other stuff. You can do so much there. You can like have lists and loops, and you can loop through all your content, and you can have components. There are standalone rules that you can then use with something else, with like views. And I can also show you that uh, a little example of how you can use a standalone component. You can do all kinds of calculation functions. You can take uh, on certain events. You can then calculate how many have um, put in, you know, how, what's the sum of some value of all the users that are in the system and uh, text conversion. You have all the conditional rules and so much more. This is a very, very big module. So you can do a lot of things there. And the additional modules that are actually very helpful and that you should look at if you are looking at rules, that's a rule scheduler where you can basically just schedule certain actions that you have already made. Uh, for example, recurring emails. Every week I want my users to get an email with all the new posts in this week. This is with the scheduler uh, in this letter run. Views bug operations, that's uh, an extension of views. And there you can put the little rules that you have already created and put them in views and select where you, what you want to do. I'm going to show you a little example of that. You have the rules bonus pack. They are just they are there, they are trying out new things. So just fun to look at it. And rules link, that's you can make put a link to entities. And then when you press the link, then the rule fires. Because it's all about when should the rule fire? You know, when should it be executed? And if some, you know, you maybe just want it to happen when you press on something. So I want to go now to the website that is built a little demo site for the Drupal camp. And I'm going to try to do my best because I have to control the mouse here. And and I have it here. By the way, it's my dad. So <laughs> coming from Iceland, looking at my my present, uh, present uh, they're actually babysitting the kids. So they got a they got a little pause now. Anyhow, <laughs> so I was telling you, I'm, I'm going to look a little bit here. You know, I hope, like I said, please just ask. Uh, we have here a very simple website that I just set up for the sake of this event. Uh, let's first look at the modules. What have I actually put here in? I, I just have a core and there is then, uh, let me see, if we can get here, here is something called rules. <coughs> These are the three modules that you get in the, in the project. And like I said, that you, uh, you always put in the rules and you can then use that in all of the modules that you write, but if you wanna, if you're a site builder, you wanna do something there. You, you put in the rules UI, and that's like an interface to manage all the rules. Uh, like you see up here, it's required by uh, the entity API and the rules scheduler. I just put it in uh, just because I was, I was trying something out yesterday. So. Let, let's look. So where are rules? Rules are here under workflow. Uh, all the way down. And maybe I just go here, it's easier. All the way down to the right. Here are the rules. Uh, rules, I don't know if somebody remembers in Drupal 6 there was something called actions and triggers. Did anybody use that? Yeah, I, I did. No, I, I did. Yes, it had like uh, in, the, in the late version, I yeah, think. It's they started with rules. They should be basically like this. Yeah. I'm not finding. Not having good luck with it. No. No. Uh, we have actually, I have probably almost, yeah, I've only been using rules in Drupal 7. Uh, but in the core of Drupal 7, there is a module called trigger that can do like limited stuff of what rules can do. Um, and and we, they some, some say that, that rules is an extension to, to trigger, or yeah, I don't know if the rules guys would allow me to say that, but let's see. Uh, if you go here into rules, I have prepared a couple of rules because I thought if I'm going to start doing them from scratch, it's going to be complicated. 
Uh, I I'm just trying to tell you like how you build a room or how you build a, a very simple room. So uh, here are already five rules that I put in, uh, and on the you see right away you have tagging because very often you have very many rules, so you have to be able to filter them. You have the event, then you can see it. For example, the first rule is executed when an, uh, when an existing content has been updated. Then I want something to happen. Uh, number two is then when I add a role to a new user after saving a new user account. So an example I was talking about before, I want to then not only have the person as an authenticated user, I want to have him as in some type of role. Uh, user has logged in that you can use, for example, if you want to redirect the user to a certain page and you want to then, for example, redirect certain roles to certain pages or to a certain page and some other roles to another page. This is then very helpful. So when the user logs in, you just redirect him somewhere else. Uh, then I want to send an email to all the users in a certain group or in a certain role. And then I, I use the event uh, cron, because cron you can always put on in, um, I hope you're familiar with cron, but here in, uh, is it? System uh, cron, you can actually tell the system to run a cron every hour, every th every three hours, every six hours, or you can just write it in your in your cron task or cron tab on your server. And then you also can let rules on a cron job. You can tell you know you can tell the system to do something. For example, every week send out a not use, you can then also use rules scheduler, where you can then schedule that the rules should be executed, but you can also do it with a cron job. And then check if status has changed. And this is just what I wanted to tell you, like if you want to check has something changed, and then I also want to do something. So you can compare from the unchanged node the value of a certain field, and with the new value of the field that you have already that you are saving the node, you can check these both nodes, and then you can do something. So these are the, the basic simple rules that I just want to little bit go through. And in the end, if we have time, I want to show you here the components where you can make a, a so by, uh, yeah. for an example in this case, I made a little action set that you can then use somewhere else, and I, in that case I use it in views, with views both operators. I create a little rule, which is send an email to a selected user, so I can select to what user I want to send email to, and then I can also personalize the email. So let's see if I, uh, I have around 20 minutes or 15 minutes to show you this. Let's see if we can go through them all. So, the first one is here, we want to show a message when a node is created. This is the, the most simple basic rule that you can create. Uh, you add an event. So let's, uh, I'm just going to show you for the sake of it what event do you want to react on. That's the first thing you do. So uh, the comment, do you want to react on a node event or a system event? For example, Drupal is initializing or content is being viewed. And there are all these events, the taxonomies when somebody is deleting something. It can be very helpful if you have entity references and very many entity references and some nodes are being referenced there that if this node is then deleted and you didn't want out when you were creating a, that the parent item and the parent item is deleted and everything else should also be deleted, then it could be helpful to run a rule just to make sure that, that for example, all nodes of this content type, if they're not referenced anywhere, I want to delete them. And you can like clean up your system like that. Uh, here also we have all these user uh, events. And that's, for example, if the user has logged in or logged out. You can, first of all, when he logs out, you can send him an email saying, hey, why are you logging out? <laughs> you know, come back. Or thanks for saving three new notes today. 
you know, you are also. And this, you can, you, know, you can use this for all kinds of stuff, but like I said, this is very helpful when you're building systems where, where you have workflows or where you have users inside the system that are locked in. So what did we want to do? We wanted to show a message when a node is created. I'm going to show you here how I would do it and then I'm just... So after saving new content, I want something to happen. Okay, here, this is new, it rules now the newest version, they did a sprint a couple of weeks back and they're always make, making it easier and better and now I can restrict it by a type I have only one content type in the system to have it play it simple. It's a basic page. And now I can just say that it should happen on all nodes that are created, or I can restrict it by the type basic page. Um, let me just go back to the rule. And if we look at it, I, I can only delete it. F, we were actually so when I have to update existing content, we don't want to do that. Let me put it in here. I was probably trying something out. So I could have made it. We want to show a message when a node is created. After saving a new content, and when I save a basic page, I want something to happen. I don't want to look if there are some conditions. Like I said before, you put in the conditions there, content type is of type basic page. But here we don't have to do it anymore because it's already in the event. So I go to the actions and I do add an action. And there I can also add a loop, if I want to loop through some lists. But now I only want to do an action. I want to do something exactly on this event. So I add an action. Let me just delete this one, there's no need to... It's easier for you at least with the, the simple ones, so you get it, how it is. So you add an action, you say, what actions, like I said, told before, there are so many actions in there that you just have to try them all out. You know, it's going to be a lot of fun. You can do all kinds of stuff with your data, you can calculate a value, you can set a data value, that's like a setting a field. So for example, what would be helpful if, if, you, if you're putting a you know, phone number somewhere that you want then the phone number to go somewhere else to, or you want to set some fields on events. We want to create a new entity. I could like say now, hey, every time I'm creating a new node, I want to create another node, for example. And then I could then create another node and another node. But I can also delete that node, I can fetch information about nodes, and I can debug, I can do all kinds of stuff. I can publish content. Uh, I can do you can, uh, yeah, the path, the scheduler, the system. Here is, for example, everything related to send mail, page re redirect. And what I want to do, I want to show a message on the site. This is just what I want to do. Oh, no, now it gets complicated. This is where most, very many people are like, no, 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 I have enough. Uh, when you get this, you, you have got it. Because this is nothing, this is nothing complicated, but this, this sometimes looks like it. It's like when you start working in views, you're like, oh, you have all these values to click on, and where should I start? This is the same. Where should I start? Just start. There are two things that you have to be careful or you have to learn. With, for example, in this case, the message that you can, because we're only showing a message. Uh, you can write in here, Hello world. This is just a message, and this is enough. But do we want to do that, or do we not just want to do something? For example, we have all these tokens here in the replacement patterns that we can actually use. Okay, what do I have? I want to save a new node. I have information about the node that I was saving. So I have also information about the website that I'm on. So I could here say, I want to check the current date. I take this token and I put it in. Let's put in the current date here. Okay, hello world. 
The time is this. And let's say Italian, let's make something, let's make it a little bit more. Uh, I am a new note. Yeah, this comes in the, in the message above. And what do we want to do more? We maybe want to, we have and only this information about the note. We have all these replacement patterns. And maybe I just want to write out the NID. Because for some reason I want to have the ID of the node because I'm using clean URLs and I don't know what the NID is. So therefore I have of course here something called the content ID. I just like that. I copy it. I go all the way up and I say the time is this. And I am a new node and I need to say number node ID. Uh, Let's just save. Uh, what can we do more? We can we can say what type of a, a message should it be? Should it be a warning, status, or error? So in this case, it's very helpful because you can check some data values and you can make you can put out a warning and you can say, hey, what's up? You have already, you know, you put in six letters, but you're supposed to put in five. You know, you can of course it's not a validation, but you can at least then. Because you don't, you still want the person to save a note, uh, but this is maybe if we want to inform the user that he is maybe doing something that he should reconsider. In this case, we just put it as a status, and the repeat message is like um, if it has already been shown. Uh, you know, for example, if you're viewing a content, you don't want it to be every time it can be then. Uh, it's sometimes a little bit buggy this part. Uh, there is an issue about it in rules, so... Okay, now let's say, we have already created a rule. <coughs> That's good. Our first rule is here, so let's, uh, let's look at it again. We are showing a message when a node is created. It's after saying a new content. So let's then just try to add a content. Okay, now I'm Drupal Camp 2014. Already next year, so I of course have no. I don't wanna. I, I get this pill. I, I put in a little uh, Drupal lorem ipsum module just so I didn't have to write anything here. Uh, I don't, also don't wanna put in any image at the moment. Uh, status is this for other examples, and I wanna save. And then I save, and what happens? This happens. I am a node, new node number eight. The time is Sunday. 16.30. Did we? No, we didn't do anything else. Yeah. So, this is what rules does. Uh, and this could have also been a, a red warning if we put in an error. And there's another interesting thing what comes with rules, and that's a debugging. Yeah. You have to have a devil installed, I think, to put the. If you go into. The rules, uh, uh, the debugging I'm talking about this this year, rules evolution log. This is where you can, it's very helpful when you're debugging why is it not happening, what I'm trying to accomplish. So you can look here. Okay, what happened actually here? Reacting on event after saying a new content. Yes, that's true. Then it took him zero seconds, because that was the first thing he does. Then he evaluated the content, the condition of the rules, and there were no conditions of the rules, so because we didn't put in any condition. And then he evaluated to true that he did the action show a message when a node is yeah, firing. And if you go in here, I think you can also open this one. Yeah. Uh, show a message. Uh, and then you can also go in here and see if it was true or false, what happened and where did it stop. So this is very helpful. This, in, uh, in the rules, you just turn on in the settings. You go back here to the rules. And you have here the settings. Settings is that here we are going to log all warnings and errors. You can also say that you're only going to log the errors. Uh, you log it into the system log and you do it always, the debug. I can also just take this off and then I never see it again. And of course, you have to have permissions to do that, so... 
There are also some advanced stuff here, you can uh, check integrity and reboot the cache. And it's very powerful. Any questions? No? So let's look at the look at the rule. How do we add a role to a new user? Because there's actually uh, more things I was telling you about the complexity of the this is not the complexity, it's very, very helpful that you can use the tokens. Uh, I showed you here that you can use tokens. There are this is the token, so it is very easy. There are all there is also here one other thing, it's called a data selection. So either you can use tokens and put it into normal text, or this here, data selection. I'm going to show you that in another rule that I do, and that's here, I'm adding a role to a new user. So, here I am, I'm looking at the event after saying a new user account. Then, I'm not going to check if, if something has happened, but I'm going to add a new user role. So, here, I just did add an action. I want to add a user role, and then this happens. It automatically shows you all the rules, no, all the, all the roles that you can choose from. And up here, you have a data selector. Now, I got the data selector when I did it, I can also switch to the direct input mode. And then I can also here just put in the, the user that I, like the current user and probably the token too. Uh, but here you can select, and in this case, let me show you another example where you can actually, <coughs> where, you, where you can choose what field you want to look at. But here it has already, because just selected for you the account. That's the account that is being created. Uh, that's the registered user. He should then get the role editor. Again, here is the values. You can switch to a data selection. And here you see it again. If I, you know, you can say a data selection, you can say the role. Yeah, or maybe not in this case. Let me see. What does it give you? It's very difficult now. In this case, select data of a list of right here are the data selectors. You can probably not, but here you can. Yeah. I'm sorry for the confusion. Uh, let's look at the role that the rule that I actually created. So here we look at it. We have, after saving a new user account, we want the person to be added to the role. Okay, let's just, uh, let's just quickly here, it's very difficult to do it like this. Uh, just gonna go in the system and let me, let's just create a user account. I'm not logged in here. So I say, I want to create a new account. My username is just a cat. The email is just patty at patty put is. I just put in some password. Uh, and then I create a new account. Uh, here, I let me just go back to look at this one. Now we can look at the people and we can see did was I put in the because you saw it, I didn't choose what type of what role I want to go into. But if you look at the camp here, the rule you know, took over, put because I was creating a new account, it put then the camp user in the role editor. So it just did all this magic for me with the rule. Very helpful. So, what more rules do we have? We have, for example, here, I want to redirect when the user logs in. Uh, I want to, let's look just at that user has logged in as the event. What do I want to do? 
I want to show a message on the side. And the message is then just welcome, account name, account name. Uh, you were last logged in on account last access. This is just all the tokens that you can just get. Uh, I want to have this as, a, as a, an error message now. You know, and I, didn't, I don't know if you, if you notice it because I didn't do anything here. Here you see this welcome camp. You were last logged on, but you were never logged on, so therefore it's empty. Uh, registration successful, and I am actually redirected here to the info page. So, anyhow, time is uh, running out, so I'm just going to show you here very quickly what is more possible. There are all these emails events, they are very, very helpful. Uh, one, one rule is here. Uh, that's my favorite thing. I do this in the systems where we have to send out emails. We like using this. Here, I want to send an email to all users. So, what does it do? It has, I want to do it on a cron job. I then want to do the action that already exists. An action called send an email to all users of a certain role. So, well, how is it then? I can also send HTML emails. I just have to install uh, the main module, the my main module, to be able to do it. This comes all out of the box. I just choose, choose, choose the action, and then it says, if the role is editor, I want to put in a subject. This is an email. Uh, I then want to send other messages. Don't forget to visit our website regularly because I'm sending this on a cron job. And I can say from who it is. And I can also just here, um, let's put in the data selection. Here I can of course just say the site, uh, the site mail should send it out. I might just be, be, be put product. And yeah. And now I'm just going to run a cron to see if, uh, what did I say? I said that everybody in the role of editor should get an email. How many editors do we have now? We have three editors. So it should actually go out three emails when I run the cron job. I don't want to send out emails, so I send out emails to my, my log file, which will come up here when I send the email. So I'm just going to show you what happens. So I run the cron. Now it is going through this magic that I was putting in. And it should not take so long on a localhost environment. So what happens here? Here's something called devil mails. I wanna show you devil. Uh, because here my emails go. How can M clear and then LL? And here you see there are three emails that the system sent. One was this is yeah to Bati at Bati.is. That's actually the account that we just created. And if you just look at it, uh, you can just. Center is patisoni at gmail.com because probably that's the, that's the site mail that I created. Uh, to pati at pati.is, this is an email. Don't forget to visit our website regularly. And everybody who was in this room, three people, they got this email now. So, very, very helpful. Uh, yeah, so I think I don't have any time to show you anymore, but this is endless. The components that I was talking about earlier. That's what you can use with views, bulk operations. You can put in your views a bulk operation that does and that executes and fires a rule. Uh, for example, you want to send out an, I, I created a rule or an action set that sends out an email to the users that I have selected in a list. And I put it in a views bulk operation. And here I can just say, I want to send Christoph and Patti an email. This is a, a component. component that I wrote earlier. I can show it to you if you want to come here later and just look at it. And I execute it. I, do you want to select these people? Yes. 
and I'm sending out an email. Let's look at my fabulous log here. You see that there are more emails in here. Uh, yeah, you can check the date, 4242, hello buddy, hello Christoph. This is everyone's so personalized email. So, this is the magic of rules. This is just the beginning. We can do so many more things, and it's like a, a material for very many talks. So if you have questions, if you have questions now, you can ask. Otherwise, you can also come here and look at the other rules that I did with the data comparison where I was checking if a field has changed. So feel free, otherwise you can send me, like I have, I have this, there's nobody monitoring my room, have you noticed? Are you monitoring my room? No. Oh, uh, yeah. So if you want to send me an email, just drop me a line. I'm trying to get to the last slide, so I'm going to say thank you. Uh, and it takes the time. Because of all the magic. Here it is. Uh, thank you for listening. Uh, please send me an email. I would love, love to, to help out if you have any questions. Uh, we do this all the time, so we should know a little bit about it. Do you have any questions now? No? Do you know of any um, drawbacks on 2006 about this module? Because uh, like I found some documentation on 2006 uh, rules. It seems pretty much the same functionality like this. Yeah. I can't find. No, the only only thing so she's asking about the, for the camera, if, if I know about the company, so how, how actually Drupal 6, how the, what the status is of the, the module, I don't know. Um, I could look at it for you. Uh, if you are running a site in Drupal 6, how far it is, we can, we can look at it together, what you can do there. But uh, Drupal 7 has been now for a long time on and therefore I, 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 I would assume that they, they have put their focus on, the, on developing the module there. Do you know anybody using it with 6? I don't know, no, at least we are not using rules in any 6 websites of ours. Uh, at least I think, but I could check. We have a couple of ones made in Drupal 6 and old websites. Uh, I could check, but I could also ask around. Probably the guys that did the module, they know, they could answer. Do you have a uh, By sending an uh, email via Woot, uh, where do you find the emails? Um, you mean like in the, when you do the selected users? Yes, when you, when you say you are sending an email, where do you are texting the email? Where does the Woot know? In this, case, in this case, I selected the case of the, when I was selecting the users. So first, they, first I did that they sent to everybody in the role and everybody who logs in and creates an account has to have an email account. So I'm taking that value. If I'm selecting it, I'm also just looping through the list with parameters and I'm taking in the parameter of the person. So I have a, I'm looping through the users that are selected and then I'm taking the, the mail that is connected to the user account. Yes, but, but the message of the email. The message takes yeah, the message text, you can also use the tokens from them. To, you mean to personalize it? You use it, yeah. So when you are looping through in the components, that's very, very nice. Yeah, I can show it to you. Do, do, do you want to see it very quickly? Yeah. Or Why not? The others, the others can also leave if you want to. <laughs> I'm not going to be offended when you just walk out. Uh, there is this, because this is like a, a very helpful thing, you'd go here to the configurations, let's go all the way down to rules, and here you have the components. So a component is an action set, so I want to do something, and then I want to use this component somewhere else, in this case I'm using the component in views buff operations. Uh, here you go, it, you can also like, execute it here if you want to, or schedule it. The only thing I do in this action is send out an email, but this makes it a little bit complicated. You can you have all these parameters that you can take in, and you also have uh, provided that you can then actually deliver back. So it works like lint functions, 
you take in something and then you can return it. And here in this case, I'm taking in the user as a parameter in this action. And this action set, uh, this, this all happens in the, in, in the rules modules, that here he loops through, I can, he loops through the user make. Uh, if I had, for example, uh, another field called email2, and the user puts there in another email address, I could also here loop through the field user email2, and then I can, this is where I'm sending it to, and the, here you see the value, the subject is hello user field first name. And maybe I can then write something more here. Hello, user field first name, because this is a field that I defined in the user account. Long time no see, you logged in last time on. And what the rules in this case does with views bulk operation, it goes through every single that I chose and then he took in the user element, the, the one, looked at it, did something with it, sent it out and then did it again and did it again. This is like with the loops and the lists. You can you loop through everything, you can use the different fields, and then that is how you can like personalize stuff. Yes, very powerful model. I can only recommend you trying it out. Okay?